from the studios of TV Grace International. Here are the ineffable words of God. The Gospel of Grace on the lips of the man Christ Jesus. Abba Father, Well, let's get right down to business. Let's look at the second letter to the Corinthians. Chapter 7. Chapter 7, verse 1. Those of faith are what? Those of faith are what? With whom? With the believer Abraham, for he was rich and called things that are not as if they were. And once he took his son to sacrifice him, then he took and raised the dagger like this, but when he went to sacrifice it, an angel came and stopped him. So if you offer your life as a sacrifice, you are not going to die. You are going to live because the angel is going to support you in everything. Verse 1 of chapter 7 says, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the Fear of God. Hey, where does the contamination get to? To the hands? To the mind. That's where the contamination comes. The mind becomes contaminated. And then you do not function with a contaminated mind. Or you go crazy. Or you live a useless life. Or you live a life of suffering, or you live a mediocre life. Or you live a destroyed life full of complexes, complaining. This happens if contamination enters your life. A madman is a person who is struck by a thought, and under suffering there comes a time when his mind fails him and he begins to talking to himself. Here you either go crazy or you go sane, or you succeed. And we have the information so that you succeed. We teach you to speak a language that transforms your life. Contaminations are easily generated. Look, once, when, when they made the Godfather movie, the Godfather, remember? From it they made volume two, three, four, five. That movie had so much violence that when it was over. So we all went out to the parking lot and everybody wanted to kill each other. Everybody wanted to have a gun at that moment. All the people started to talk to each other in a bad way, move on, move on fast. Everyone was troubled. Because the spirit of the film was about the Italian mafia of violence. Then that spirit comes to the mind. Say the mind and then manifest that spirit. Should the film have a rather unfortunate ending, you know, where you are troubled and questioning, why would it end up like this, right? Why would that movie end like that? And then everyone leaves the theater sad. If it's a comedy movie, everyone comes out happy. Because those are spirits. Spirits means attitudes that are placed to you in your mind. For example, if you like reading, I've seen a lot of people who travel and to avoid the agony of spending two hours staring out the window like this, take a book and read it, but they carry a spirit in their hand because the individual who authored that publication possesses a demeanor and a lifestyle. So the author is sharing a story and simultaneously what he is putting into the book is his personality. And if you don't have the ability to decontaminate yourself from the spirit of that person, 
That person who has been living for 45 years in attitudes of which you are unaware. If you get those attitudes in your mind, you end up being contaminated by that spirit. But that does not happen with us. In growing in grace, we can contaminate ourselves with whatever we want. Because in time, we say no more. Look, we click. We click and turn off. And we remain blessed with every blessing. But those who do not know this information, pour them. A spirit of conformity creeps into them. There are many spirits. For example, look. You know that if you listen to me, I put a spirit in you. I am a spirit. That's what I'm doing, putting my spirit into 24 nations. And you know that I recommend myself <laughs> because my spirit, look, my spirit is of joy. My spirit is positive. It's of love, it does not hurt, it comforts, generates joy and contentment. I sometimes wake up in the morning in a spirit and I think to myself, hold on, this feels like salsa. <laughs> or sometimes I wake up in the spirit of soft music with ballads or rock, I have, I adjust my mind to whatever I want. Hello. Well, that's being a God. The gods imagine in the Bible, God says you are gods. Well, the gods have to dominate their surroundings. You know, the surroundings have to be dominated by you. The surroundings cannot dominate you. That is why the brothers in Cuba, they are there. We submit to this government and they went to talk to Fidel with the government. We are not in hiding. Look, here are the addresses. We are here, here and there. And you know that in Cuba, they do not approve any more organizations. They were told, well, go and submit to the groups that have already been accepted in the past. But they said, no, we don't want that. That is contaminated. We want the spirit of Jose Luis. Hello. Hello. <laughs> the spirit of the gospel. For example, look there, right there in the first letter to the Corinthians where we read chapter 11, verse 4. Look what it says there. Second letter where we were reading right there in chapter 11, verse 4. What does Paul say in verse 4? Are they all there? For if he who comes preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached. Yes, Paul preached the spirit of the resurrected Jesus. But the apostles preached Jesus, the long-suffering one, the one from Nazareth. Because that is what they lived, what their hands touched according to the word of life. For they spoke of it. Now Paul did not walk with Jesus of Nazareth. Paul saw him resurrected. Therefore, Paul was talking about another style of Jesus. And then he says there, For if he who comes preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different what? A different what? Do you know what that means? Another attitude. And what was this other spirit that existed in those times? It was not that of Jose Luis, it was that of Moses. It was not that of Paul, it was that of Moses. That other spirit was always there. The spirit of Moses is, beware, there is sin, there is condemnation, curse, judgment is coming. The fire of Jehovah comes and cuts you down. It is a spirit of condemnation where you always see God against you and where you can't talk too much about God because it makes you get too religious. Haven't you seen that in the masses? There are spirits there, lots of them. Because people think that religion is to be very serious. Or is to be quiet because those are spirits. In other words, that is, they are attitudes that get into people's lives. And then Paul said, look, for if he who comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit. And then he said to them, or a different gospel. 
or another gospel because Paul knew that there was another gospel, the gospel of circumcision. And then he was always taking care of the church. Look, be careful, don't get another spirit. Because if they receive another spirit, they will not reign. You have to be very careful how you speak. Our vocabulary is very important. When a person doesn't know how to speak, you must depart from them. A person who is always complaining and is always criticizing and always is, you know, things are bad. You know, man, hey, and then they get into the politics of their country. You know, they are always complaining. Have you heard those programs here in Miami? That you hear a spirit, anti-whatever spirit, and always complaining and complaining and with problems. And then you get into that and that spirit gets into you. This life is made up of spirits. Hey, I wonder which spirit is operating in you tonight. You have to have a good spirit. Let's look at Matthew chapter 15 verse 11, historical book. Matthew quick, everybody with the Bible. It is necessary that you have a Bible and mark it. A pen, this was discussed. Take notes and keep a small notebook always at your side. So that you can take notes and practice so that when you talk to someone you will be ready. Don't come here without a Bible. Without a sword, a soldier, without a sword you can get hit. Peter comes along and cuts off your ear. <laughs> you have to come here, here, armed to the teeth. Notebook, pen. And Bible, hello? Matthew chapter 15, verse 11. Not what goes into the mouth. Are we all there? Not what goes into the mouth defiles a man. How many things go into the mouth? Huh? What goes into the mouth? Many things. That does not contaminate. Now look what it says. But what comes out of the mouth? This defiles a man. Yes, because there are people who judge you because you ate certain food, pork food, this food, forbidden foods. But what contaminates is what comes out. Do you know why? Because what comes out is the abundance of your heart, what is here. And if you are contaminated, I don't want to be next to you. Imagine you go on vacation to visit a relative you haven't seen in a while. Oh, father. And you arrive and that family is contaminated. So you get there and they start criticizing the whole family. Look, man, you just don't know. Look, you know that this uncle did this and do you know what the other one did? They are unhappy. Look. And you went on vacation to rest. However, you discover that their conversation is filled with trash and contamination. Or you send your son because they are your relatives. You sent your daughter, your son, and your son went there to defile himself. After all the effort you put into cleaning him so diligently, you send him on a six-month vacation. Or excuse me, six weeks or two or three weeks, and the child comes back upset. I'd better not send him there. Don't you love me? It's not that, but I'm not going to send my son there. For you to contaminate it. Because what goes out contaminates. Say contaminates. What comes out. You know that when you speak evil, the spirit world. In the heavens, not in heaven, in the... Heavens is surrounded by angels. Imagine that you... You say that you begin to say... I wish a truck would run over me. I'm choking. The situation is not easy. I would like to die. I don't want to live anymore. I want to die. And those angels, 
they know neither good nor evil. And then they say, look, he wants a truck. Hey, he needs a truck. Let's go find one of those huge ones that are really big. Uh -huh. oh. The big ones such as those in Sealand, they say, well, that's what he's asking for. You are defiling because you are the one who is speaking evil. And you are saying that your marriage is no good, that your house is hell. That the blessed one that is your husband, you wish he would die and he works in the FPL. <laughs> he works there. Look, speaking badly. Hey, you know I spend a lot of time at home taking back what I say because sometimes I say words that don't fit. Angelus, I cancel what I said, it was just a joke, you know? Hello! Because what? What comes out of the mouth, what? Now what's coming out of your mouth, blessed one? Look, look at the one next to you and look what's coming out. Ah, look, no, don't look at me. Look to the side to see what's coming out. Me. Be careful of what is coming out because that is what you are receiving. And then you come to say, the gospel of grace does not work. What do you mean it does not work? It says decontaminate yourselves. That is your job. That is the responsibility of your priesthood. That's your mouth, blessed. So you have to discipline yourself, you have to know how to speak. How are you going to talk to your son or daughter like that? How are you going to be doing that? You are contaminating them and maybe your daughter doesn't have the capacity to not receive that. And more from you who are the mother or you who are the father, he does not have the ability to put up with that poison that is coming out of your contaminated mind, you are annoying him. You are hurting him because you are a very powerful being. You are a spirit living in a body. You are a God. When you speak your words, they carry tremendous power. Look, look at the case of Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews, let us turn to the last book of the gospel. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15. Verse 15, are they there? Hallelujah. Do not contaminate yourself. <laughs> hey buddy, be careful with that. You can't speak evil here. You can't say bad words in this church. That's bad to say hallelujah here. That's an obscene word. Look at what verse 15 says. Looking diligently, hello, say looking diligently. Looking diligently lest any man fails to obtain the grace of God. What for? To cleanse himself. Grace is for you to cleanse your mind. Behold, let some root of bitterness springing up hinder you and by it only a few. Many be defiled. Hey, when there is someone who is poisoned, in your family, that doesn't happen here because we don't receive that here. Here we tell you to shut up right away. Hey, I don't receive that. Don't talk like that here. Okay. Hey, you know that there are people who are always criticizing, who have a loose tongue, who are poisoned by what happened to them in their youth or because they don't have a good car and the other has a good car and feel that the world owes them a debt because they have done so badly. And then you see it all the time. They are, they are rooted in bitterness. And then wherever they stand, they start shooting that stink, that poison there. And that contaminates many. Because there are many who are weak in the faith. 
that do not have the ability to withstand these missiles. You know? <laughs> Those missiles are coming. Do you know what Paul called them? The darts of the fire of the evil one. Therefore, above all, take up the shield of faith so that you can resist and extinguish the darts of the evil one. Some people have a mouth. Look, fish die from their mouths. There are people who have a loose mouth and love to criticize. And what they are looking for is for someone to talk to them about such a topic so they can criticize. And they start to criticize. Take a good look. Look closely who is next to you and who is talking to you. Look, I'm going to tell you something about this person. You know, here between us. Look, no, no, don't contaminate me. Take that over there. I'm not interested. Leave me clean. Why do you have to be dirtying me? Why do you have to be vomiting on me? Swallow your own vomit, but don't come to me and talk badly. Hello. <laughs> Some people are looking for someone to vomit on. They say, hey, who will lend me? Their clothes so I can vomit on them. Go to the bathroom, look and scream there in the bathroom. Do whatever you want. But don't come and throw that dirty vomit of the root of bitterness at me. And many are contaminated, it says so right there. Looking diligently. Be careful who is calling you on the phone. Those people who can't live with themselves and are always looking for other people's phone numbers too. It is better to stay alone. Don't give your phone to anyone. Look, let me talk to my husband, then I'll tell you. And why do you have to be asking people for their phones? Unless you are a close friend and that moment comes when you ask for the number. But you don't have to be asking anyone here for their phone numbers. What's the point to vomit? <laughs> don't let them dirty you, blessed one. You are a very powerful God so that they talk garbage to you. There are people who are experts in generating discord. They are troublemaker. Yeah. Pastor, are you talking about me? You know that? <laughs> you know that? But what comes out of your mouth? Look at everything you are saying. It is going to have some effects. For example, I have been saying... Since this word became a part of my life, I have always been saying, I am blessed with the believer Abraham. And then I went to find out who Abraham was and he is rich. Calling things that are not as if they were. The guy is a general. The type is so cool, you know, the guy is the best. For I said, I am blessed together with him. Well, that is what I am. And I started to call things that are not as if they were. To say, I am rich. And I began to confess finances. And it takes time. But it comes. The same happens if you start talking trash and maybe at the time nothing happens. Talking garbage, garbage, garbage. But one day they bury you in the landfill and one day you're going to be full of garbage. Because that is what you are talking about and what comes out of your mouth has effects in the spiritual world and manifests in the physical world. Please. Yes, hey, blessed and whatever you sow, you reap. Do not come here to say. So you cannot come here and say, Lord, I am going to church, help me, because he is going to answer you like this. Get in there for a little while and I will give you some light and then we will talk. Correct that mouth, big mouth. <laughs> you have to correct your vocabulary. That's why the angels are holding off because that vocabulary of yours is useless. And they are not going to serve you. A loud mouth like that, talking trash, vomiting all the time, contaminating people, speaking evil in your house, saying things against the covenant. They are not going to be of any use to you until they see that you have that well-washed brain. Until it is clean and in line. <laughs>